Good morning, guys. My name is Ryan Miller. I'm PDGA number 79252, and I'm from just out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, in a town called Waukesha. In 2019, I'm sponsored by Team DGX, which is the Disc Golf Experience. Disc Golf Experience is a local business here in Milwaukee owned by Mike Harrington that includes tournaments, course design, uh, course travel, um, leagues, all sorts of different events. And he also owns a shop called The Disc Barn which carries tons of uh, molds from a variety of different companies as well as bags and, and all the miscellaneous accessories needed to uh, disc golf. My second sponsor as of 2019 is actually a media sponsorship or media partnership with Discmania. You'll see in my bag here that I throw a lot of Discmania discs and so being able to work with them in 2019 is pretty close to a dream come true. I'm really looking forward to just kind of what comes of it and seeing kind of where it leads me. So today I'm gonna to be going through my bag, but before I do, something that I just wanna to mention to you guys is that I am a slower arm thrower. So you'll notice that I don't throw anything above a 10 speed with uh, the exception of, of one disc, which I'll get into um, when that comes. But if you're a high arm speed thrower, this in the bag might appear a little, um, little boring to you but just take whatever i say and add some understability to it and that's how these discs would fly for you for those of you like me that aren't quite at an eagle or simon level these are the discs that i throw and why i throw them and i think that they really benefit you so let's dive in so i'm going to start with my mid-ranges the first mid-range that i carry is the MD, which is very similar to Innova's Mako. I carry a D-Line MD, which my goal for this is to beat it in so it becomes uh, more understable. Hyzer flip to straight shots or straight to turnover shots. And then I have a Luster MD, which just feels absolutely great in the hands. Um, whatever line I put this disc on, it holds. It's just a fantastic mid-range, very easy to throw. The next disc in my bag is new in 2019, and that is the new stock stamped S-Line MD3. My goal for this is to just be able to let go of it hard and flat and let it ride as straight as possible before finishing to the right. Uh, I can put a little bit of Anheuser on this and it'll finish nice and flat, or I can put it on a hyzer and it won't absolutely dump, but it'll soar. Then I have this Dana Vici uh, Tour Series C-Line MD4. It's very flat, so it feels great in the hands. When I want a shot similar to the MD3, straight with a little bit of finish into a headwind, I'm throwing this disc. When I want a glidey hyzer shot, I'm throwing this disc. Very easy to throw. And then my last mid-ranges, I have two of the MD5s. I have a Metal Flake MD5, which is a little bit more glidier than your typical MD5. And then I have a C-Line MD5, which is an absolute beef stick. Um, I'm throwing this for big hyzer shots, approach shots, or anything in the wind where I just want to make sure a hyzer is executed. If you're unfamiliar with the MD5s, they're very similar to Innova's Gator. They feel fantastic and it's definitely worth trying out. Next, we're gonna get into my fairway drivers. So I carry four FDs. These are my two least stable FDs. I have a D-line FD, which is just for big hyzer flip to turnover shots. And I'm also working on developing a roller shot. So this is kind of the disc that I'm throwing uh, specifically for that. And then I have this G-Line FD, which it's kind of funny. It actually has some metal flakes in it. So I call it my metal flake G-Line FD. But anyhow, this is my straightest FD. Pretty much whatever line I put it on, it's gonna hold. And with enough snap, I can hyzer flip this to dead straight and it doesn't finish to the right or left. It just kind of falls right at the end of its flight. My other two FDs 
is I have this all black baby blue bar stamp Discmania S line FD. This thing is new to the bag. I mainly put it in because of how awesome it looks, but it flies really good too. It's a little bit more stable than the last two I talked about. And overall, just really easy to throw. Um, I throw it for long kind of glidey late hyzer shots in the woods, especially. Um, really excited to see kind of what I can do with this disc into this year. And then next I have the Color Glow Night Strike, which is Nate Perkins uh, FD, signed by him himself. Nate, thanks again for signing this for me if you, for whatever reason, stumble on this in the bag. Um, but anyhow, so this is kind of similar to the MD4, how it's my Headwind MD3. This is my Headwind FD. Uh, because of its uh, C-Line and kind of Color Glow combination, it's got a little bit more glide, but it's also very stable when it comes to wind conditions. So I'm throwing this when the wind is coming right at me for just about any other shot that I would use my other FDs for if the wind was in my favor. It's getting a little warm in here. I'm gonna take off my sweatshirt. Ah, that's better. So the next discs that I'm gonna talk about are my favorite molds in the Discmania lineup. These are the CD2s. The CD2 is a 9.5 minus 1.2. It's very similar to a Thunderbird, except it, you know, instead of that 9502, um, it's 9502, is that what a Thunderbird is? I think it is. Uh, it's 95 minus 12, so it's just a little less stable, uh, very easy to throw. If anyone is asking me, hey, I wanna get into Discmania, what do you recommend? The CD2. Even talking with Simon a few weeks ago, when he came to Wisconsin for an indoor event, he told me that the CD2 is the most underrated Discmania mold. Um, he used to throw them for rollers, and yeah, I just, I can't recommend them enough. So let's talk about the CD2s. I have this G-Line CD2. This is my least stable CD2 now that it's kind of seasoned. I can pretty much hyzer flip this um, into a short flex shot. And what I mean by short is it doesn't turn over a lot. It turns over ever so subtly and just holds a really nice kind of tight um, S-curve type line and then finishes to the right thanks to that two fade. I'm throwing this CD2 almost all the time. The next two CD2s that I have are my S-Line CD2s. I have Dana Vici's Roaming Thunder, and then I have this Huck Lab CD2. I don't throw the Roaming Thunder all that much. I'm a really big fan of Dana. He's kind of been a pretty big encouragement overall, just in my Disc Mania journey, from answering questions that I have, to sending me discs that he thinks I'll enjoy, um, to encouraging me to pursue the Disc Mania Media Partnership. Um, he's a Midwest legend when it comes to disc golf, and he, uh, overall, just a great person for the sport. So I kind of keep this in my bag more so as um, like a good luck charm, um, just because I don't want to lose it. It's a great disc, I love it. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of why that's in the bag. But my Hulk Lab one is the S-Line one that I throw the most. This disc is when I'm trying to go as straight as I can for as long as I can before it then slightly finishes to the right. I'm throwing this disc. I can give it just a little bit of hyzer and it'll flip up flat. And if I let go of it flat, I can get it to flex, but nowhere near for as long as my G-Line CD2. So I throw this kind of when there's wind, when there's not wind, um, and overall when the field is just wide open. And then my last CD2 is my C-Line CD2, which was sent to me by my friend Rivas on the East Coast, who's also a Disc Mania Media partner. Um, here's his Instagram handle, go follow him. He's awesome. I'm a big fan of him and I know you guys will be too. But anyhow, he sent me a pair of uh, C-Line CD2s. This one was the beefier one of the two. And kind of similar to, again, my MD4 and my Night Strike FD, this is my Headwind CD2. When I want similar shots to the rest of the CD2s, but the wind is not in my favor, I'm throwing this one. The next two discs that I have are newer to me in the bag, and they're actually going to probably be what I consider my distance drivers. Um, the CD2s, as well as these two discs, are the discs that I can throw the farthest, 
And so when I'm needing the most distance that I can get, which I'll max out anywhere between 370 and 380, occasionally I can hit that 400 foot drive, but it's not consistent. Um, and so throwing these discs kind of helps me get to my max out right now. And the first disc is the S-Line TD. We'll talk about the TD first. This is a 10.5 minus 2.1. So just fast enough that I can throw it, enough glide and enough turn that I can hyzer flip into a flex shot and just a little bit of fade. So um, when it crashes, it's not skipping or doing anything significant. I feel really comfortable throwing this disc. Uh, it just feels fantastic in the hands. I know a lot of disc maniacs are a big fan of the S-Line TD, most likely for different reasons. The TD stands for turning driver. So any line that you put it on, um, big Anheusers, it holds it. So I know a lot of the faster arm speed disc maniacs throw this disc for that reason. Um, but for me, this is my kind of farthest flying disc right now. And I'm looking forward to kind of seeing what it does for me this year. And then the next TD series disc that I have is the S-Line TDX. So this is a less stable or a more understable CD2. CD2's numbers again, nine, five, minus one, two. The TDX is a nine, five, minus three, one. So very similar to Innova Sidewinder. I can let go of this hyzer and it's gonna flip and turn over and It'll ride an Anheuser, but as it loses speed, it will still kind of finish to the right. If I let go of it flat, it's holding a big turnover line the entire time, uh, which is really nice because I like to be able to have an Anheuser shot and not have it hyzer out. So um, I bought this last year for when I was right-handed to kind of work on my sidearm game. And then I gave it to my friend Ken when I realized that he could sidearm it really well and now it's back in my bag now that he doesn't throw it anymore and I'm excited to have it back. The next disc in my lineup is the G-Line PD. PDs for me are relatively stable, so I throw a G-Line because as it seasons, it'll become a little bit less stable and I'll be able to throw it like a normal PD. This is kind of my guaranteed headwind shot when I just wanna make sure that it's not gonna flip over too much and kind of turn into a thrower. I'm gonna throw this flat. It'll S-curve really nicely through the headwind. It won't go super far because a PD is 10-4-0-3. Um, that minus, or that 0-3 kind of makes it dump for me still. But um, yeah, so this is a good headwind disc and then any other shot that requires just kind of a big hyzer um, that, that flies a little bit before it dumps and maybe requires a little skip at the end, I'm grabbing my G-Line PD. And then the last driver in my bag, the only disc in my bag that's over 10 speed is my C-Line PD2. Now this run of C-Line PD2s, I'm not sure what run it is. Um, it's, I was told it was the most overstable. So the top of the rim, it's just kind of your normal C-line, but if you turn it over and you look, there's some bubbles in there. I was told these are the beefiest, and so kind of funny that I have it considering my arm speed. But I'm not throwing PD2s off the tee too much unless the intent is to have an intentional skip shot where I can throw it 100 feet in front of me and kind of let it skip up. Um, or if the wind is super gnarly and I don't even trust my PD in it, I will throw the PD2 because no matter what, this thing with my arm speed is gonna hyzer out. This disc is pretty much a utility, utility disc for me. Uh, a lot of pros use the Gator or the FD, um, or not the FD, the uh, MD5, for like their upshots or, you know, they're kind of their get out of jail uh, discs, sidearm rollers, that sort of thing. I use the PD2, that's just kind of what works for me. Um, and so, yeah, I'm a huge fan of it. This is probably the Discmania disc that's been in my bag the longest. Uh, I had another one that was in my bag even longer, like 2013, 2014, um, but I lost it. So this one will have to suffice, but nonetheless, still a fantastic disc. So next I will talk about my putters. I have four putters in the bag. My main putting putters are the D-Line P3X, 
I have a 175, which is kind of my go-to in the circle, just around circle's edge putter. And then I have a 170, which is my out of the circle kind of jump putt and sometimes approach disc. Um, the reason why I putt with P3Xs is because prior I used to putt with DX Rhinos. I like the fact that they're not very fast and they don't have a lot of glide and they're overstable. It just kind of works for my putt. And when I decided I wanted to kind of add more Disc Mania discs to my bag, um, the P3X was kind of what fit that, that spot. They're a little bit faster, 3203 instead of 2103. But all that means is that I just don't have to work as hard at it. I can be a little bit lighter on my release and I just know the disc is going to go where I'm going. And with the hyzer finishing, um, kind of goes into the chains. So the bead is very similar to the Rhino. The thing that it's missing is it doesn't have the thumb, thumb grip, but I wasn't super attached to that anyhow. Um, again, I liked the Rhino because of how it flew, not necessarily how it felt. And so far, learning these has been really fun. And then the last uh, two discs in my bag, two putters, are Innova putters. They're not just media putters. Um, the first one I'll talk about is my DX Flat Top Rhino. So this is my putter that I drive with off the tee. I can let go of this on a hyzer and it'll flip up straight and ride really straight. And if I let off just a little bit, um, it'll finish with a hyzer. This is what I'm throwing off the tee, but also for my up shots. I can aim to the left of the basket um, with a lefty backhand, kind of throw it straight and it'll finish and nestle up right next to the pin. I also will jump putt with this. Um, I'm just very comfortable putting with rhinos in general. And so if the P3Xs are never working one day, I'll see if the chemistry with the rhino works instead. Um, so kind of always keep it in the bag. And yeah, I picked this up from Delwood, which is a shop uh, in Lockport, Illinois at the Canyons Disc Golf Course. It was in the used bin for $3. Sean Callion's a cool dude. He's really, really nice, um, big fan of him. And so that was kind of my way of supporting him while I was down there. And it stayed in the bag. I absolutely love it. And then the last disc in my bag is kind of a funny one. I'm willing to bet most of you guys haven't even heard of it and that is the DX Wedge. So this is my DX Wedge. It's, it's super understable. The numbers are three and a half, three, minus three, one. So very understable, very straight. This was a collaboration with Innova and Edge Disc Golf. They had created the wedge kind of for, for education and like um, taking them to schools and that sort of thing. Super easy to throw. So uh, this is kind of my get out of any situation disc. It's so understable that I can let go of it like a big spike hyzer. It'll flip up straight and very late turnover. Um, so very easy to throw in the woods. Uh, when I need to do some sort of weird sky ante shot to go over something to get back to the fairway, I'm going to this disc. Um, it's kind of been in my bag for many, many years, 2012, 2013. And <laughs> Yeah, it's just kind of what I'm known for. I like it so much that I got my license plate to say DX Wedge in 2019, which is a little ridiculous, but if you know me, it's kind of what makes me up. And those are the discs that I throw uh, right now. The only other thing to talk about is my mini. My mini is uh, my wife and I on our wedding day. It's just kind of my reminder to take it easy, have fun. Uh, know that no matter what's going on, whether it's a tournament or rec round, I got a wife at home that's fantastic. Um, absolutely love her. Got some snack wrappers in there. And then real quickly, just kind of talking about my bag. Uh, it's a Tismania bag. This was a gift from a lot of my friends back in 2017, just before I got married in January of 2018. Um, they kind of went in and bought this for me as a wedding gift. I love it. I don't think I'll ever need another bag because it's got plenty of room. Um, my favorite brand and just super stoked on it. The coolest thing about my bag though is when we had Simon Lazat in town a few weeks ago for the indoor event. I had him sign my bag. Sorry, I got too much stuff. I had him sign my bag right here. So it kind of acts as my reminder to always have fun. Simon told me that when disc golf no longer is fun to him, if it ever becomes about the money, he'll quit. That's just not why he does it. 
Um, and so it's just a super cool reason that no matter how bad I'm playing or how well I'm playing, you know, I see that and just know, hey, Simon would be having fun right now. If I'm not having fun, check my attitude and kind of update my mindset and have some fun. So kind of a cool reminder. But yeah, so that is what I'm throwing currently in 2019. If you have any questions about any of the discs that I throw, please feel free to drop a comment. Let's get a conversation started. And just for some uh, additional uh, disc golf related videos in the future, whether it's personalized vlog type styles, disc reviews, et cetera, et cetera, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel here. I'll be posting a lot of media this year and it might be refreshing seeing media from somebody who's rated just shy of 900 and has a slower arm speed and um, is really focused on just this journey of disc golf and, and trying to get better and better and working on growing the sport and all that stuff in the process. So again, thanks for watching and take care.